Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this um, kind of beach ball looking pom pom. It's a four stripe pom pom. And I'm using a clover pom pom making tool. This thing is really cool. I reviewed it a couple days ago and I realized I can make a lot of cool looking pom poms with it. So I'm doing a little series on all these different pom poms that I've come up with. Um, using this tool specifically. Um, I'm not too sure if you could make these with other pom-pom making tools. It'd probably be pretty difficult, but the unique way that this makes pom-poms makes it easy to make these interesting looking pom-poms. So this is what the package looks like. This is the bigger size, the large size pom-poms. Let me turn it sideways. Um, but you, this is what it's going to look like on the shelf. It comes with two sizes in each package. And I'm using a smaller size one, just so it fits better in my camera here. And I'm going to just pick two colors, and we're going to make this pom-pom. So let me grab my yarn. Okay, so the Clover tool is, um, it's a two-piece machine, and it just connected by this little piece of metal in the center. It's real sturdy. When you put it together, it doesn't fall apart. It has four arms that swing out, and you're going to use two at a time, so you can see the this slide. So you want to line them up and you're going to use two for each side. So I'm going to close two off and I'm going to start with this side here. It doesn't matter, they're the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter which ones you open first. And what I like to do is I hold my yarn, the tail, in the same hand as I hold my tool. And I'm going to start at one end of the machine and for this four color um, pom pom, I'm only going to wind halfway. So I'm going to wind half of this half in the white and then I'm going to switch over to my other color. Now the reason I'm only using one strand of yarn is that I found it's easiest to keep my um, yarn or my pom poms looking best when all of the yarn isn't twisted. So if I use multiple strands, if my yarn started twisting as I was wrapping, I got a much more uneven pom-pom. And you can check out my review of the Clover pom-pom to see those, what they look like. But I just use this single strand and I fill in as I come back around. So I'm going to just wrap this half and try to keep it as close to the half mark as possible. You can kind of push over if you need to. And I want to fill up this divot. That's going to give me the most um, full pom-pom I can get. Now another important thing with the, um, with the yarn as you're winding is um, if you want a totally consistent pom-pom, a good thing to do is count the number of times that you're wrapping. So if I was not talking, I would be counting, let me fix this a little. I would be counting how many wraps I've done so that I can do the same number of wraps with all of the other quadrants that I'm making. And that'll make the most um, full, complete ball that I can. You can see that I'm still um, a ways to go on my divot. With these, um, if I keep wrapping, it's going to start falling over. So I'm going to start my next color before I finish this one. So I'm bringing in a red. And I'm going to hold it just like I was holding um, the white over here. And I'm going to start in the middle this time. And I'm going to start wrapping it around. Carefully keep your um, ends untangled. You'll see how I keep them untangled when I switch over to my white again. Pay attention to your sides. Don't leave those too bare. But try to keep your yarn you know, is um, don't fill it up in one spot too much. Try to go back and forth and back and forth. So once my divot is almost completely full, then you'll see that I'm going to close it to test it. But once I get this up a little higher so that I can work my white again, I'm going to do something so that I don't get my yarn um, if I start my white right now, it's going to go around my red yarn. It's going to get real tangled. So what I'll do to work my white is I'm going to flip my machine 
to keep my red out of my way and I'm just going to wind it the opposite way so that way I'm not tangling up my yarn as I go this tail is in my way though, I'm going to cut this out of the way scissors you can just cut the tails because you're going to cut them anyways near the end and they're already locked in from all the wraps you've done so it's not a big deal and you can move this around you know if you need to get better um, sight on the sides so once I get enough white then I'll flip it back over and do some more red so remember count as you're going to get the most consistent sides that you can But once you think you've filled it up pretty well, close it and make sure that your arms touch. Because you only have that little divot down there, but you don't want to fill it in so much that your arms don't close, because you're going to need them um, closed for the ending part. So once you're happy with how much you've wrapped it, I'm going to do a little bit more red in the center here. So my white's looking a little bit thicker. I'm going to close it off, and then I'm going to cut my tails. Alright, the next part, I'm going to cut this one too to get it out of my way. Okay, so to start the other side, what we want to do is um, do the reverse of what we did on the first side, because we want it to, here, let me turn it that way so it makes more sense, we want it to be the opposite so that you get this four quadrant look. So when I open up my um, arms. I have red here, so I want to start with white here. So make sure that you're not doing red because then you're just going to have a two tone um, pom pom. So I'm going to grab my white and I'm going to start doing my half again. So I'm going to do basically the same thing on this side. Remember, count your, your, um, your wraps for a good, consistent pom-pom. But I'm just going to fill this up till I feel like it's not going to, or till it's going to start um, falling into my other half, and I'll start with my red. So I'm gonna finish wrapping this side and then we'll do the next step. Okay, I'm just... Okay, I'm just finishing off the last bits of the red. I'm going to close it up and cut my tails. And now I am ready to create my um, pom pom fringe, I guess you call it. So to do it, I usually hold down the arms. So here's the arms that come up. I'm going to hold those down so that I don't accidentally move them because once you start cutting, these are just loose pieces of yarn that are being held by these two arms and if you open it up even slightly your um, loose strands can shift and then you'll have a lopsided pom-pom so make sure you keep those closed. So I take my scissors and I go right down the center so make sure you have nice sharp pointy scissors that can get right at the top of that and go right down that center divot. You do one side and then you're going to turn it over. Oops. And luckily these arms hold pretty well. They don't pop open. So when you drop it, it doesn't open up. Then I'm going to do this other side. So I'm hold my arms down. These arms are popping up a little bit. I might have wound that a little bit too much. That's why those arms are popping up. So be careful. That's why it tells you not to overwind your yarn should hopefully hold till I get my tie in there. So I have both sides cut and now I'm going to grab a piece of yarn to tie my pom-pom with. So I'm using my white and what you're going to do is run the yarn inside that divot that you just cut. So it fits nice and easy in there and you're going to do a double knot. When you start to knot it, it's going to pull your machine apart a little bit to fit your knot inside. So pull tight, but not too tight, because I have broken my yarn a couple times trying to pull too tight. But double knot that up. If you're going to use 
um, your tails to attach your pom-pom to something, then don't cut them too short. I'm going to cut these nice and short just for my showing purposes. And then you can clean up any long tails that you see before you take it apart. It's a little bit easier because everything is nice and even when it's in the machine. So it's easy to see the little outliers. Any long tails you have, just cut them the same size as the rest of your pom-poms. Then, what I like to do is when I open up my arms, I'm going to open up one side first, I'm going to sit there and kind of just fluff it up a little because like, you get lots of little fuzzies that come off of this from where you cut it. So you can see I have a lot of little fuzzies on my background here. So that helps clean it up a little bit before you attach it to anything. So do this over a trash can if you can so that you don't wind up with fuzzies all over you. I have to use a lint roller every time I finish one of these. And then, once you open up your arms, you're going to pull your pom-pom maker apart. And you'll see it's a little squished on the sides, but just take it in your hands and roll it around a little bit. And it puffs right up. And then we just have to clean up the little spots, usually where it's joined, so you can see these little tall pieces. So, just take your scissors and trim those up. Usually it's the edges, it's the ones that are over here and over here that get the most out of whack because they kind of overlap so much when you're working those edges. But you don't want sparse edges, so you just gotta fix it when it comes out. So you can sit there forever, cutting little thing, little edges off. And I'll finish now. Um, so that is how you're going to make your four quadrant um, pom-pom. If you have any cool ideas or any pom-poms that you've made, let us know below. But thank you for watching.